Thank you so much, everybody. This is Javier. We're going to talk today about safeguards for our clients of life insurance policies. And this is something that's very important. We are in some pretty crazy times as it relates to the pandemic. A lot of the companies that are struggling right now in all sectors of all industries, including life insurance. And most importantly, this is about you increasing your overall level of self-confidence and confidence in the carriers <clears throat> or companies that we work with. And so I'm going to ask you a few questions here. Now, this is something that everybody here should answer correctly, not guess, but write down to the penny, answer these. If you don't answer these immediately, write down to the penny, correct something's wrong. Uh, you need to go back and sharpen your saw, as they say, in the field of one of the most important elements. You know, I deal with probably the most paranoid uh, clientele, which are police officers. They are paranoid about everything. What if this happens? What if that happens? And, you know, it, it is what it is. They're legitimate questions. And so <clears throat> we're going to do that. Now, before we get started, I do want to go over some first things. First, I mean, I want to start by recognizing our top producer so far as of today. We have uh, another week, give or take. But, <coughs> excuse me, but as of today, I just wanted to recognize our number three personal producer for, uh, for the month of September and number two. It's actually tied in both uh, second or third place, whatever you want to call it, because they both have five S. Number three and number uh, number two, I should say, and number two is George, uh, George Munoz and Michael Hatter with five personal applications. I also want to recognize uh, Jefflin. Jefflin's doing a tremendous job. She's number one so far with six personal applications for the month of September as well. So I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud of everybody. I believe this is the week, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jefflin, if you're on, but this is the week that she does her first podcast. And so I wanted to congratulate her on that. You know, there are different levels of success that we can all achieve, and they require different skill sets, if you would. And so if you want to really, really make it big and stay big, uh, podcasting, podcasting is the way to go. We had a lot of oh, perfect. My iPad is back up. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. But like I was saying, podcasting is a crucial element of success in this era for a lot of different reasons. It's always been important, but right now it's especially important because of all that's going on with the pandemic in the virtual world that we live in right now. You want to make sure you're well-versed in it. We've done a lot, and I do mean a lot of training in that field. Uh, we don't have anything coming up on that right now. Uh, I know Kathy uh, Dargar has her coming up as well. Her equipment came in, so I'm super uh, excited for her as well. And so, you know, congratulations to everybody, especially, like I said, to Jefflin. Hopefully you finish the month off strong and that you're in a position to retain the first place, if you would, as it relates to personal production. But, you know, this is something everybody should be after. Uh, it's unacceptable, or at least it should be unacceptable in your world to not be productive on any given month, unless you intend to not be productive. If you're not going to be productive, well, then call it what it is. You know, if I go on vacation, the last thing I want to do is be productive. <clears throat> but I haven't been on vacation in a very long time since February. We came back from Bali and we came back from Singapore for Valentine's Day. And uh, then March, everything changes, we all know. But since I am here, I, I need to be productive. And then the question to yourself is, you know, how often do you, do you need to be productive? Do you need to be productive? Uh, let's see, do, 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 cancel. Let me just go ahead and do this, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to log in, or I'm logging in, I should say, into the uh, – so let me just make sure we can go ahead and do this. All right. We're not going to go with this. So just stay with me. And so, like I said, it's really important for everybody to just ask yourself, how productive do you need to be? How productive do you want to be? And don't go around saying that you want to be, you know, very productive, but yet you're not doing anything uh, or if you're not putting up any numbers on the board. You know, I, I've just focused on what matters. And all that matters in business is the same right. thing, all that matters in life, and that is our results. Either you're generating results or you're not. And if you're not, get on the ball. Don't waste another one month or another week. Get on it. It's not that hard. Our business is not that difficult. <clears throat> it's, it's driven by mechanics, how often you prospect, how many people you contact, how many calls you make, how many emails you send. Very, very predictable. I know last week that, you know, I, I did that police uh, roll call. I knew it was going to be a week, a good week, and it was. This week, you know, we're supposed to do another roll call on Thursday, and, you know, they didn't call me, and I didn't call them. Nothing happened. So no, no new production came from a roll call. Well, I, I own it. My fault. But we cannot let that happen another week. And so if your production is not where it needs to be, well, then, like I said, assess what's wrong. And usually it's us. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's us not taking any type of activity or generating activity. And you can fix that if you want to. If you don't, you're not going to fix it. And either way, nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> so, like I was saying, 
let's just go ahead and continue. So I've got a lot of stuff to cover with everybody. Uh, in regards to the emergency planning binder, which has brought up the training we're going to do today, I want to thank everybody who has gotten back to me and gave me the feedback regarding the emergency binder, how they realized a lot of things, and I'm not going to get uh, into it but because of the stories are personal, but it's amazing. It's amazing how many lives have been changed for the better. And as a matter of fact, today's training is a result of the emergency binder as well, <clears throat> because I'm going to give you a real life example with myself. I wrapped up my uh, binder up this week, and it's amazing how much stuff I came across that was no longer active. I had one, po two policies that were expired. They were 15 year terms. I didn't even know they were gone. I uh, picked up two ones that I didn't know existed via term policy, or group policies, I should say. And so it's been a lifesaver in, reg in regards to that for me as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And so if you haven't ordered your binder, we still have them available at emergencyplanningbinder.com. Everybody that ordered it received it. It was a very big project. And this is one of those things that's going to serve as a cornerstone moving forward for all of our agents, because whether you're looking to just give it away on social media to existing clients uh, to generate leads, it's a very powerful tool. And so the price is going to go up yet again. So my recommendation is if you haven't done so, visit emergencyplanningbinder.com to get your hands on the binder. Uh, anybody have any stories regarding the binder that you've done with it? Uh, reach out to clients or anything at all? <clears throat> anything, anyone? Javier, I've, uh, I've taken the, you know, the binder and I put it on, I went and I bought a whole bunch of thumb drives. You, know, you can get them really cheap. And I put a whole bunch of thumb drives together and uh, you know, put them on that. And I put on the thumb drive emergency binder and on the other side, I put my phone number and my name. And uh, I went out to see a few of my clients that I've already have. And uh, I went to them and said, look, this is a real important thing. And I told them how they can, you know, just put this and plug it into your phone, into your computer and type in whatever you need and save it on the, on the thumb drive. And then I told them that they should put it in an envelope that says, in emergency, you know, open this envelope and uh, put it in there and seal it, you know, and just put it in your desk. And then this way you tell your people, hey, if anything happens to me in any way, shape or form, you'll see an envelope in my desk, you know, rip it open and there'll be something in there to be able to give you all the information you possibly need. And uh, it, it seems to be working great. I mean, they, they love it. They love the idea. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Anyone else, please? Or did we not do anything with it? Anybody? I, good morning, Javier. Good morning. I, Go ahead. I did the first um, a, a Zoom presentation about the binder with two of my um, teachers. So it went really good, and uh, possibly I got a referral from the first one. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? Keith, I appreciate that. Great job. I mean, if enough of us just do something with it. You know, the problem with tools is that we have a way of just simply literally amassing them and putting them in the storage shed and never using them. And that's why we are where we are a lot of the times. Um, anybody else, anyone do anything with it? Yeah, Javier, I did an annual review um, with it and I gave, I actually, actually we didn't have the at my disposal last year. So I gave that uh, to them during the annual review and it went very well. Perfect. Thank you. And like I said, that's something that will prompt us to just simply take more action. If you were to ask me, what's the one thing we can all do to get our business to the next level? I would tell you, it's just take more action. Call more people, see more people, Zoom more people. That's all you have to do. And God knows we have the time. And if you don't have the time, well, then it's time for you to prioritize. You know, where did this fall into your uh, overall business plan? To me, FFS plays such a big role because as much as I love it and as much as I love you guys, I don't want to be here uh, forever. I don't want to be here much longer, to be honest with you. I want to set up everything so that it continues to pay me uh, after I disengage from the business 100%, focus on other things, focus on even more on my family and so on. But the only way that's going to uh, happen, of course, is by building the business that gives me the lifestyle and most importantly, the income that I need. And so that's why, you know, I'll be very honest with you. I'm doing what I'm doing to help many, as many people become very, very solid, successful, cash flow type of income that they will not go anywhere else for any amount of time. Uh, otherwise, we'll be, be personal producers until we get old. And I don't want to do that. I have no interest in that but you better have a plan in place as well. All right, cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Again, emergencyplanningbinder.com. I'm going to fly through this because I don't have a lot of time. This is not my intention today. But as you know, the vacation certificates that we were using were working incredibly well. But two things happened. The pandemic, number one, international travel went down. And then uh, number two thing that happened, the price was going up. It was $197 a month. A lot of people couldn't uh, 
they didn't want to pay 197 though it's worth 197 people were just simply not paying it because of the fact that they you know were not using it <clears throat> and so what ended up happening uh yesterday uh, thursday we had a webinar with the founders of the company uh, i know them very very well i was actually part of their beta program with this they got started and when i got started with it i was bragged how I only paid $37 a month while everybody else was paying $197 a month. And the reason was that I came in as part of what's called the grandfather uh, plan. And that was part of the beta, the initial test. So I paid 37 bucks to this day. I still pay 37 bucks. But what's nice about it is that when you go with gold, which is the $197 a month plan, you also get paid every time your clients re uh, redeem the certificates. You know, last night or yesterday, because every Friday I get paid, I got something like 1300 bucks, I think it was, uh, from them just because it was Friday. And, you know, people are redeeming these things because they have two years to travel, blah, 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 and all this other great stuff. Well, anyways, on Thursday it was announced, which I thought was an excellent move, that starting Thursday, the price has been reduced for the gold, which is what you really need. The price has been reduced on the gold program to the founder's amount for a limited time, of only $37 a month if you pay 30, like me, if you pay monthly, or $28.91 if you pay annually, which is only $347. Bucks. And on top of that, so anyways, that's big, big announcement. One, $28 a month if you prepay annually, which is what I would recommend, or if you pay monthly, $37 bucks a month, which is what I pay for a limited time to jumpstart everything is an incredible move. But here's the best part. They place a lot of emphasis on local travel within the U.S., and it's thirty-seven months, uh, thirty-seven dollars a month for gold, ninety-seven a month for gold. You don't need platinum; you just need gold. Thirty-seven bucks a month, which is one that I have. They up the destinations to. We had thirty, now it's up to one hundred and twenty-five. But here's the cool part that I wanted to just share with you real quick. In the U.S., it's now four days and three nights. It was all two nights. Now it's four days, three nights. And if you look here, we're talking about Atlantic City, Albuquerque, Atlanta. Branson, we're talking about Boston, Chicago, Cape Cod, Fort Lauderdale, Daytona Beach, Gatlinburg, Vegas, Gulf Shores, Grand Canyon, Galveston, Miami, Myrtle, Nashville, Lake Tahoe, New Orleans, New York City, Orlando, Ocean City, San Diego, San Antonio, <clears throat> Palm Springs, Phoenix, Virginia, and the one that we're going to tear up here in California, Yosemite. Four days, three nights in Yosemite. Right now, RV cells are going through the roof because everybody just is tired of being inside the house. They're going, they want to go somewhere. And people want to go to open areas like Yosemite. And so this is pretty cool that you are going to be able to give away four days, three nights to uh, your clients, if you would, or just give away. They don't have to be clients to anybody, prospects, just from joining a webinar, blah, 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 blah. And of course, you can give yourself one of these a year for yourself <clears throat> and your family. Now, people are making travel plans, uh, cruise lines, as, even though it's crazy it's, it sounds, they're taking uh, reservations already for next year. As you know, FFS is scheduled for a, web, uh, for a cruise next year. People are making reservations everywhere already. And when somebody gets one of these things, what's really nice about it is that, like I said earlier, they have two years to travel. They don't have to travel now, not next year. Hell, they can go in 2022 uh, technically, and they know that they are going somewhere. But they added new destinations like Argentina, uh, Australia, all these different cities in Australia. And what's unique about Australia they chose cities that are, for the most part, isolated, meaning beautiful, not a lot of people. Again, thinking pandemic and so on, it's all right there. And so we were just in Sydney, uh, Marcella and I, this year, I can tell you, it was beautiful. Uh, we were actually also in Cairns, Thank which is you. a beautiful, which is a Thank great area, sure. and just a bunch of stuff. Anyways, Vienna, Thank Brazil, you. Canada. And as you can see here, uh, all the different destinations within Canada, we're talking about Spain, which uh, we're talking about Colombia, Dominican Republic, Fiji, Germany, Kyoto. We're doing this uh, trip. We're actually, we booked this one. We're going to Kyoto, Japan next year. Malaysia. Uh, we just came back from a lot of these places ourselves that I can tell you are just simply incredible. Uh, Dublin, Ireland, Greece, Hungary. Indonesia, I mean, the okay. Philippines we just added, and of course, for anybody interested in working the church campaign, Israel, that is the big one. Israel, for people that are interested in or already working. I know this is thanks to uh, Alan, who when we were in Cancun with the founders, pitched Israel to please get it on, and they did it, they did it for him. 
Anyway, Singapore, we just came back and back from Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Mexico, Italy, Philippines, South Africa, Russia, Spain, Thailand, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, Turkey. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable place, guys. That if there's anything I've learned how to do well <clears throat> that everybody needs to learn is how to stir the human spirit. I mean, there are people dying of being in their home. All the, they would kill to go somewhere, let alone for free. And you are able to help them do just that by covering the stay in its entirety. And you can give as many of these as you want. So anyways, that's enough of that. Like it's a, Not $37 and, a month. What's that? It went up to 100 and... It was 197 So it's going down from 197 And just so you know, at 197 they had more people that you could shake a stick at all over the world that were leveraging the power of this. It's $37 a month if you pay monthly, or my recommendation, pay annually and pay 34 bucks, and it's done. You can give as many of these as you want. Also, you can give away the restaurant incentives and uh, a lot of the other bonuses that come with it. I just, I've never done that. I've always led with the trips, and I cannot tell you how many referrals this has gotten me, how much income as well. So go to marketingcertificates.com. Here's the best part. If you were to go to marketingcertificates.com right now, you're going to look for the green buttons that you see right there. You cannot even join and pay until you go through your seven day free trial period, which is pretty cool. And while you're on the free trial period, you can still give this away. So get on the ball, get on the ball. It's not, not a lack of tools, it's a lack of deploying tools that keep most of us behind or back. And that's a great thing to do it. So oh, Javier, for your can, Javier, can you go back one slide so I can um, snap, I mean, snap a picture of the things. There you go. Any questions from anybody? I didn't mean to cut it short. Anybody about this? I'm telling you, whether, whether you, and here's the best part. When you go ahead and join for free the first seven days, and then you pay whatever, 37 or 34 bucks a month, which was 197, 197 a month, down to 34. Uh, when you do that, and every time your clients redeem their certificates, you get paid a, a, a fee, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, it'll be a matter of time when people ask you, how do I get on board? Everybody becomes an affiliate automatically, free. There's nothing to pay. And when you tell another agent, somebody on your team or whatever, and they come on board, you get paid 40% uh, residual <clears throat> every month that they stay on the program as affiliates as well, which is how I get paid on Friday, which is just simply incredible. I can't believe that they pay me for this, but they do. And I don't do it for the money. I do it for the money that it generates in my other businesses, especially FFS that can do the same for you. So uh, any questions before I move on? All right, if not, I just wanna go ahead and get into the training. And I'm gonna start by telling you that what I'm gonna do is train on something, on what I refer to as a worst case scenario. Uh, one of the things like I mentioned earlier, it's not just for police officers, but police officers are definitely paranoid clients. People wanna work with them, can't wait to work with them, and then they start to work with them and they say, get the hell away from me. I can't deal with these people. They're scared, they're paranoid, they don't trust me, they're rude. I mean, not all of them, but most of them are paranoid. Uh, and, and that's the one thing that I will tell you that is good. That's how they stay alive. And so we should all be skeptical. We should all be skeptical of what, what if I'm saving? I've showed you guys my personal IULs, my granddaughters. I've showed you my whole life, my financial life. And then, but what if one of these companies goes out of business? What if they struggle? Of what, what if? You just I'm never know. I'll tell you the story here of, let me just go ahead, Joe and Mary. Here we have Joe who passes away. And study after study has shown that nine out of every nine people will die someday. So this will be you. Uh, one day, this will be me someday. That's just the reality of it. The only question that we really have to answer is what kind of life that we lead, that we matter, and most importantly, do we leave our family at least the same as they were when we died, or better yet, did we leave them a little better? Or do we leave them hanging? Where they have to go beg, and they have to go out there and embarrass the hell out of themselves to hopefully raise enough money to get you in the ground. So hopefully you have life insurance. A lot of people have life insurance, but yet even more people don't. So this is Joe. He's gone. So his wife, his widow, Mary, uh, Mary, she's glad that he had his life policies. And so life insurance policies are going to kick in. She starts looking through her claim form. She puts in, and then she starts getting letters from the insurance company, and she's shocked. She doesn't understand some of the stuff that's happening. She doesn't understand why. And I'll put a few questions to you here just in just one second. So what recourse, if any, does someone have if a company goes belly up? Anybody. Now, this is me, by the way, playing the devil's advocate. 
This is me uh, doing just literally that. The devil's advocate that what I'm going to show you is on a worst case scenario, but it is 100% possible and it happens every single day. Not every week, not every month, every day in every state in this nation. What course is it? She gets a letter says, we're not going to pay you everything or we're not going to pay you anything at all. Or, I'm sorry uh, for your loss, but we are currently having financial troubles and check back with us in a while because we are possibly going belly up. The but California Insurance State. Board, they pick it all up. I mean, all Ooh. the other, they, they spread and, de and disperse. Ooh. Back the, up a little. The, 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 the California, or the, you know, whatever state you're in, the insurance uh, board, the insurance uh, department. Oh, first of all, this is true in every state. You're right. And what I'm going to do is talk about California, even though it's the same thing for every other state. But we're going to use focus on California. And, and so, okay, the board, okay, good answer. Somebody else. What recourse? They have to have enough reserves to be able to accommodate their policies going through the, um, oh, I apologize, forgot what it's called, but they just have to press forward to get their money. Okay. Um, anybody, here's what I'm looking for, just so you guys know, and I'm not uh, you know, picking on you. I'm just saying that well, we, want, we want solid answers. We want crisp answers. We want something that tells the client and reassures the client that you know what you're talking about. And so, yeah, you're, everybody here is right. What, what else? What recourse? Come on, guys. You do this for a living, for God's sakes. Come on. Come on. This is scary. Come on. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Do we have anybody here? Yeah, we have about a million people here. Come on. And this is what I'm talking about, self-confidence. you got to have, I mean, this is a very sterile environment. It's just you and I. It's us. Nobody else is watching. Nobody else is listening. Javier, are you talking about the insurance of the insurance? I'm talking about this simple case where the lady puts in a claim only to find out that the company is either struggling or has gone out of business altogether. I don't know. Is there a way of calling the legal reserve? Do they actually I'm, have a phone number? I'm asking you guys. <laughs> I'm asking you. You're in the business. You guys are going around selling this stuff. And one of the things that I will tell you, I learned this a long time ago. I always start by training the hardest way possible. I'm not going to get the easiest trainer. I want the hardest trainer because if I can get through this person, I can get through anybody, any prospect, any client. But if I don't know the answers, I'm not going to go out. I told you. The problem that most people have is not that people are saying, no, I don't want peace of mind with an IOL or a term or an annuity. The problem is nobody's talking to anybody because they lack the confidence. What if they ask me this? What if they ask me that? Well, then train. That's why we're here. That's why I've, anything I've done in my life, I've always wanted to go at the, what I thought was the hardest because I figured if I could make it there, hell, I could make it anywhere. Uh, anybody, come on. Very, so is it, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it a simple question? Very. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I did my emergency binder and it was, um, I was amazed how scattered everything was. I couldn't put the damn thing together. It took me almost a week. Now imagine if I die, and my family's expected to do that. Now imagine if one of them goes to a company to put in a claim only to find out that, hey, you know what? Hey, let, me, let, me, let me move forward a little bit. I have one policy. It's a term policy, half a million dollars. And it is what the company called HSBC. Has anybody heard of HSBC? Of course. They are one of the biggest companies in the world, literally. Everywhere I go, yes. I've always been blown away. I get off the plane, whether it be Australia, whether it be Singapore, whether it be Bali, whether it be Mexico, whether it be in Europe or whatever. And every time I get off the jetway, it's plastered with posters, HSBC, HSBC, where I'm in China, anywhere. And so anyways, I need the info on one of my policies because I literally didn't have the, the, the main uh, policy form. So I log into log in the website and I go to the website. Turns out that they uh, also owe, own another company called Pavlonia. Pavonia, I'm sorry. Pavonia, here it is. So they told me that, oh, actually, your policy is with Pavonia. I go to Pavonia and do you guys see at the blue? What do you see at the blue, uh, the blue box at the top? What does it say? Pavonia Life Insurance Company and Rehabilitation. Yes. What does that mean? 
they are in rehabilitation. <laughs> They're <everything>? sick. <laughs> They're financially weak and uh, working to fulfill their financial assets to be able to stand alone. What, what it, everybody's right. What it means is they're on life support. They don't have enough money to fill their obligations. They just don't. And when they click on, it says click here for more info, it takes it to all the legal briefings with the court of every step of the way that they're trying to take over the company. So right now would be a bad time for me to die and expect my family to get paid here. For a lot of different, for a lot of different reasons. reasons. And so the point that I'm making is that this is this week. This is not this year, last year. This is this. It, more companies are going to go down. So I ask you again. Let's just say you sold me this policy. The, the number one question I'm going to ask you is, okay, Mr. Agent, Mrs. Agent, Miss Agent. Now what? What do you say? Come on, guys, please. I have no business. What are you talking about here? We haven't I, had, um, we haven't we had a, a four for four with a junior bacon cheeseburger. Stay away from cheeseburger. That's not the answer, but uh, Javier, I was going to just say that, um, I mean, the process, as I understand it, for any company would be that if they fold under, um, the guarantee association will use whatever assets that company has to pay for all existing claims before they restructure everything for other insurance companies. Well, well, first of all, that's the first time I hear most of what the right answer is in regards to who. If I was to ask you, if I have money in the bank, a straight savings account, who's protecting my money? In case that bank... The FDIC. And I mean, and, and, and what we want to hear is we want to hear something like FDIC. Not some kind of insurance company. No, FDIC. Who does it? And, and again, this is the same in every state. But in California, who is it? California Insurance Guarantee Association. California Life Insurance Health. And, you're absolutely no, California right. Insurance Guarantee Association. Association. And so what I'm getting at is that we need to know who it is, first of all. Because guess what I do? I don't trust anybody. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to literally go back and research this. And if you notice show. here, what I'm showing you right now. It talks about how this happens. It says the California Insurance Guarantee Association, approximately $51 million a year they have to pay out. Yeah, or I don't know. And so, what I'm getting at is that if this is not something that's just coming to mind immediately, you're going to have, you're going to have issues because this is part of you knowing your stuff. I mean, you are the expert and we need to be precise with the information we give people because that way, if they want to, they can go verify it themselves and you're going to sound, your stock is going to go up is what I'm saying. Versus them having to do the research as who it is. Now, as we move along, very, very simple question I'm going to ask you. California, again, her husband, Mary's husband, Joe, had two life insurance policies and one annuity, all issued in California with the same company. Very, very simple. He had life insurance policy that went about A for half a million. Policy B for us for four hundred thousand in an annuity. He had two hundred and fifty grand in it. Very very simple, very simple. So the question that I have for you in this scenario, the company has gone belly up officially belly up. I'm with a company that's about to go belly up. They're gonna and the reason they dumped me on this company is that's what they're exactly they knew what was gonna happen and it's gonna go belly up. So the question that I have in this scenario, how much of a life policy A, which was half a million, will she receive? As the benefit. All right, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Dude. All right. So, how much of life policy A, which was five hundred thousand, was she receive? How much? Anybody? Guys, we can't have this. come on. We can't. Uh, all five hundred thousand. It's up to five hundred thousand. That don't guarantee. So that's not the question. The question is, how much is she going to receive? The five hundred thousand. So she's gonna get five hundred thousand. Okay, one five hundred thousand. Anybody else? Just speak. Don't text because it takes too long. That's now, this, the is talking, now, this is you talking to your client, and they're gonna take you for your word. Okay, so she already told me I'm getting half. Or if I'm the widow, five hundred grand. Okay, anybody else? Guys, this is scary. Come on, man.
Anybody, come on. I agree, okay, the 500,000. Okay, 500,000, okay, 500, we got two for 500. Anybody else, come on. Um, Javier, I have a question. Is there a percentage well, uh, based this, on the company? We're not, we're not doing the questions yet. This is something we should already know. This is something okay, I thought we it was 90%. Know. Okay, so what's the number? 90%. I mean, what's the, what's the amount? Uh, 450,000. Okay, so 500, 450, anybody else? Come on. Up to 100,000, 80%. Okay, so how much is this person going to get? What are you, what's your number? 100,000. How many? 90? 100. 100,000, I'm sorry. Okay. 500, 450, 100,000. Come on. 250,000. 200, okay, okay, 250,000. Anybody else? I mean, wait, I'm sorry. 80% of the five. The answer, let's just get right down to it. The answer is 300,000. And we'll come back to that in just a little bit. All right, so that was A. How much of life policy B will she be receiving? Real quick, guys. 240,000. How many? How much? Uh, 240 if we 240? go by, by percentages. 240. Okay. Anybody else? This is scary that somebody's out there trying to sell this stuff. Come on. 240. Is stuff. What is it? 240. 240. Okay. Anybody else? Please. All right. Let's go forward then. I mean, come on, guys. And the answer, of course, is she's going to receive... Zero. Not a damn thing. Nothing. Oh. All right. right? So nothing. That's the answer. Uh, how much of the life annuity? Quarter mil. This is an annuity now. All of it. 250. All right. 250. Anybody? I agree. 250. All right. Anybody else? Anybody, come on. You guys are selling this stuff for God's sakes. What? 250. <laughs> what, 250? Um, of course, the answer it? in this scenario, she's going to get a goose egg. Nothing. Yeah, I was going to say. And so every single one of you, you know, I hope your e &O insurance is paid up because that's exactly what it's for because you're going to get sued as you should. And so. Well, Javier, I, I have a question because um, I actually just looked up the Sego thing the other day when I was talking to my client, and it says a maximum of five hundred thousand. So I'm just maybe a little confused of the data. I, I'm looking it up too, and it's it's saying that it pays out. This is confusing because it says um, if my company becomes insolvent, how much would be protected? You'd be entitled to receive protection from the Guarantee Association in the amount of a hundred thousand or eighty percent of the let's say one thirty five. Okay. I there's, don't understand. There's different answers, there's two, and I'm confused. Well, there's only one right answer, always. And here's the way it boils down to. Right now, we are being certified because of what's coming, just so you know. It's good that you're here because you're going to have some homework on your hands. I'm not here to give you all the answers. You're going to have your homework. The last certified limit is being increased as we speak. The only thing that we can talk about is as the day of when the – the fault of the company took place. And so the answer is everybody, well, you're, everybody's right with the exception of the fact that there are different dates on it. So the new one is gonna go up and it has to be certified up to 500,000 total. What I'm gonna show you is the last one that we have certified that would govern this particular case, but thankfully it's being adjusted. So bear with me now. If the certification comes out or has come out, then we're with the new numbers, and that's good. It used to be what you just said, Holly. Then this is what we're basing this one on right here, which is the California Life and Health Insurance Guarantee Association. As the percentages are staying the same, it's the total amounts that thankfully are going up as we speak. So what does that mean? If you have a policy that you've delivered this calendar year, especially within the last three months, it has, it should have the new amount. If not, you're going to have the old amount. And so this is based off the one that was not certified, but the current one, I guess you could call it, until they certified the numbers for the 500,000. What I want to show you is not the amount, because these change all the time. Holly's right, Kathy's right, and this is right, obviously. The percentages, though, however, 
and the way they're calculated do not change. And so in this example, what somebody, I'll give it to you. And I know most of you have never read this, so I'm going to read it to you so that you can at least, and I know that once you actually read this damn thing, you know, we probably delivered a thousand of these. And it simply says, notice of protection provided by California Life and Health Insurance Guarantee Association. This notice provides a brief summary regarding protections provided to policyholders by the California Life and Health Insurance Guarantee Association or the association. The purpose of the association is to ensure that policyholders will be protected within certain limits in the unlikely event that a member insurer of the association becomes financially unable to meet its obligations. Insurance companies licensed in California to sell life insurance, health insurance, annuities, and structured settlement annuities are members of the association. The protection provided by the association is not unlimited and is not a substitute for consumers' care in selecting insurers. This protection was created under California law, which determines who and what is covered and the amounts of coverage. Below is a brief summary of the coverages, exclusions, and limits provided by the association. This summary does not cover all provisions of the law, nor does it in any way change anyone's rights or obligations or the rights or obligations of the association. Persons covered, common sense. Uh, the individual is covered by the association of the insurer was a member of the association and the individual lives in California. That's very, very important. At the time, the insurer is determined by the court to be insolvent. California is also provided. So that's very important because if you buy it while you're a resident of California, you move to Arizona, and then the company goes insolvent in three years while you're a resident of Arizona, you're going to be governed by Arizona. Very important. Coverage is also provided to policy beneficiaries, payees, or assignees, uh, whether or not they live in California. And so here it goes in a nutshell. Let me just zoom in. For life insurance policies, annuities and structured settlements, annuities and association will provide the following. For life insurance, 80% of the death benefit, but not to exceed 300,000, which is the number we're talking about right now that's being up, uh, updated to a higher amount. But the point is 80. 80% 80 of cash surrender value or withdrawal value is not to exceed 100,000. So what does that mean? The first one simply determines if somebody is dead. If somebody is dead, the beneficiary gets 80% or up to the limit, whatever that limit might be. 80% of cash value basically re refers to somebody that's still alive. So I have an IUL with 200,000 and the company goes belly up. Then in that particular case, because I'm still alive, my benefit would max out at 100,000. That's just the way it goes. Annuities and structured settlements, 80% of the present value of the annuity benefits, including net cash withdrawal and net cash surrender values, but not to exceed 250. Okay, forget all that. Here's the part that's important for you to know, and, I, and I'll show you where I'm going with this in just one second. The maximum amount of protection provided by the association to an individual for all life insurance, annuities, and structured settlement annuities is 300,000, regardless of the number of policies or contracts covering the individual. Now, what, what does it all mean? Well, a couple of things. If you understand that, that you, in this example, and again, the number goes up, it, it, it will go up, it probably has gone up, that's not the point that I'm making. The, the, what I'm point that I'm making is that it's important to understand that it encompasses all the policies with that one company, which is what I'm trying to get at right now. You will have more self-confidence knowing that our companies, whether it be National Life Group, that's been around since 1848, and it's a mutually held company. That's a huge deal for people. Could it go up? Could something happen? Uh, could it go down? Could it? I don't know but I feel very comfortable with a company that's mutually held and that's been around since 1848, especially when you look at the uh, ratings that they have, which you should be aware of every year because they change every year. You should be aware. Of. The second point that I'm making, like let's just say Anico. Anico was chartered back in 1905, but that's not the whole story. The whole story is the amount of life insurance in force Right now, it's 100, I'm sorry, 2020, it's 107 billion, which is an incredible number. And on top of that, what's really nice about this is that the previous slide referred to per company. And so what that means is that if you are doing everything under just one company brand, you could, especially with our carriers, I'm confident that that'll work. But when it comes to peace of mind for people, you might want to consider diversifying that. That if somebody does have a, are you well with Anico? Maybe you get the annuity with National Life Group. 
or many of, or one of our other many carriers because it's important for you and most importantly for your clients to have the peace of mind knowing that the likelihood of something going down with our carriers is I want to say non-existent because it's always existent, but it's so minute that it's, it's just simply a non-starter because of how long they've been around. Because now if I was to ask you, what are the ratings for National Life Group this year? I hope you know them. If I was to ask you, what are the ratings for Anico this year? I hope you know them. I mean, I really hope you do. And so the point that I'm making is that when you diversify that, now, everything we described here boils down when the company becomes insolvent. Now, here's what happens most, if not all of the time. Another company takes over that company, uses some of the reserves that the company should have had. Now, I know of a guy who went around buying insurance companies just to take out all of the reserves, using some of the money from the reserves to buy another insurance company and taking out all of those reserves and squandering them and then bought another one until he got caught. And so in that case, when you say, well, the company has reserves, well, technically they should have them, but I know of companies who have burned through their reserves illegally. And so the point of it is, is that it's important to diversify. I'm not going to show you my binder, but if you notice, one of the things that you notice, I should say, with all of my life insurance policies, whether they're term, whether they're IULs, they're all with different companies. All of them are with different companies because I've known for many, 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 many years, the nightmares that I have seen people go through with other companies when they went belly up, literally belly up. If there's no life left in that insurance company, zero reserves, no company is going to pick them up because it's a pure loss. And that's when they go into receivership. And when they do that, that's when the company is dead. So going back to what I'm saying, that mines, in the example that I'm giving you, this is me right here, that this company is in rehabilitation. It's still going working through the courts to see how they can fix it, merging it with another company. Somebody buys it. It's not dead yet. So as of right now, the company will still be responsible for it. But once this thing dies, then I'm out of luck, or I have to fall under the numbers of the numbers that I just shared with you here in California, or hopefully another company just picks it up and we go about our merry way. And I knew something was up because when I bought it from HSBC and I ended up with Pavonia, I never liked that. I never liked that. So you got to be very, very careful for your own personal sake. But going back to what I'm trying to stress to you right now is the fact that it is critical that you understand that because the more you know about our carriers, the more confident you'll become. The more confident you become, the more productive you will be. The more productive you are, the more income you will generate. But above all, we want to make sure that we're doing good by everybody we come across and not overexpose somebody unnecessarily. And there are people who love National Life and they just love Anico and they love, you know, uh, uh, Columbus Life, you know, I know Victoria Lee did a great job. She's the number one producer in the whole country for them. And that's nothing wrong with that. But knowing what I know, what I've gone through, when I see people, what I'm going through right now, it would behoove everybody to go ahead and at least diversify. There's nothing wrong with that because if something goes down, the likelihood of Anico and National Life and Columbus and all these other companies going down at the same time are almost zero. I'll be honest with you. But if you just simply break them apart, and diversify where you send your clients to, you're going to be that better off. Uh, what I'll do is this week, I have a call in to the uh, Department of Insurance as well as to the Guarantee Association to give me the final certified numbers so then I can email it to everybody, whether they're 300, whether they're 500, it doesn't matter. It's just that you have to be careful not to go out there and overpromise and then somehow circumstances under deliver to our clients. That's not a good thing. So it's not about spooking anybody. You know, people tell me all the time, you're being negative. I'm not being negative. I'm being honest. Hell, I'm going through it myself. And I bought it directly from HSBC because if I had got that from an uh, agent and the agent's not telling me what's going on, I'd be very, very upset. And I just don't want that to happen to you. Now, any questions about anything from anybody? Yeah. Well, with Javier, regard to reinsurance. Oh, I'm sorry? sorry? I was, go ahead, whoever the other person was. Oh, I just wanted to circle back uh, Javier, so in the scenario you gave, it was $1.15 million that they had insurance, but at the end of the day, worst case scenario, if they're lucky, they're going to end up with $300,000 out of that. Yes, and because it all taps out at, for all life insurance, annuity and structure settlement annuities is 300000 as you can see on the screen right there. So that would be that, 
is a real kick in the pants. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot even begin to tell you. Now, understand one thing. This happens every month. And as you can see here, on an annual basis, this is directly, uh, where did it go? Right here, SIGA, right here. This is the website, if you want to go to it yourself, about SIGA. Since this creation in 1969, SIGA has successfully taken over and covered claim responsibilities for over 100 insolvent member insurance. Between the years 1969 and 2000, SIGA averaged payments of approximately $51 million, 51 million per year. But that represents probably on what should have been probably 200 million, give or take, of benefits. Something's better than nothing? Well, I don't buy that. It's five, uh, like I said, uh, because of the binder, which I hope everybody has filled out, man, it brought so many things to light in my personal life. We're actually having a family meeting because everything we had written up up until now revolved around the kids being kids. Now they're all adults. Two have kids. Oh, one has a kid. Another one's due this week. So I'm going to have another. And so we're rounding up everybody to explain the flow of how everything goes through the trust. So uh, I croak. Everything goes to Marcella and Marcella dies and the other clauses kick in as we decided. And if Marcella goes, well, there's no financial loss for me. The money's just going to keep it in the fund to grow. I don't need it. And then finally, when I'm gone, then that happens. And so now it's completely different. So, but I'm expecting that if I have, you know, $2.5 million coming in the form of life proceeds, I'm banking on the 2.5 million going to my kids, my legacy, not exactly. one million because somebody didn't say something to me back then and didn't know what the hell they were talking about. They just wanted to make a buck off of me. And it has happened. I have my own, one of my IULs that I showed you last time. If you look at it, you'll, name, you'll see the name of the agent on the bottom who's just a total deadbeat. Uh, you know, that I gave him my, uh, a very good piece of business, which was on my own life, that I could have written myself and to help him out. He wrote it, made very good money, and disappeared. I haven't seen, you know, haven't seen the bastard in six years. Uh, and so I need that change. I don't want that. The guy's getting, getting money every year for doing nothing. And so that's what, you don't want to be like that. You, you, you don't want to be, you know, in the position where they regret having gone with you just because they trusted you or they believed you and only to find out you were not the real deal. I don't want that. I've been burned and, you know, I think we have an obligation to our clients because hopefully you're a client sell, uh, yourself as well to deliver on what we promise. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Uh, with regards to reinsurance companies, um, you know, there's many and most uh, strong, and I would imagine National Life Group as well, has reinsurance companies which are like kind of Warren Buffett type of companies, you know, that really insure the insurance companies. Sure. Uh, what part do they play in the, you know, people going down? I mean, aren't they, I mean, this is a double, double layer of guarantees when we sell that we use. Well, there's two answers. Number one is that yeah, there's a lot of reinsurance. And, uh, but part of the reason that reinsurance is such a, I mean, FFS is trying to get into the game and allow you, meaning the, uh, you know, agent to partake in the games. And the reason it's so profitable, reinsurance is so profitable is because they cherry pick who they reinsure. The chances of something going down are going to be very, very low. These insurance, like I told you, when HSBC switched it over to Pavonia, I knew something was wrong. Nobody's rushing. No, they didn't have that set up. And they knew that they were just going to let it crash and burn. Either A, somebody picks it up at a discount, which when HSBC says they don't want it anymore, uh, nobody around that I know is going to pick them up. It's going to end up more than likely in receivership. And, and so, so the answer is yes, but here's the most important element of it. And we only go and we only get held accountable to what we give our clients. And so what I gave you, what I showed you, I should say on the screen, which is this bad boy right here. This is all you can ever, don't ever mention reinsurance to anybody because unless you know for a fact and it is written, who's going to be reinsuring it for how much and all that other stuff, don't be the one they're going to come back to. Because I will tell you, we live in the most litigious society. And while H HSBC is uh, handing over to Pavonia and Pavonia is crashing and burning, I'm going to join the class action lawsuit against HSBC because they assigned the policy, but they did so in bad faith because they knew what was happening. And here we go, another lawsuit. Uh, get in line, two, three years. Hopefully, you know, we get our, our, our money back. And so... I think the insult to injury lies that in most cases, what they end up doing when it crashes and burns as well, 
they'll give them the option of just returning the premium of what the client paid throughout the life and not the face amount, which is wrong. And so that's a kick in the face as far as I'm concerned. And, 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 and so that's what I'm saying. I started, I end with what you see before you, because this is exactly what I gave my client. This is what came in the packet. This is what National Life Group gave me. And so therefore I give it to them and I stick to this. Now don't lead with this. To be honest with you, I wouldn't even bring it up because of the fact that it just simply doesn't, uh, does, doesn't do anything. It is there, but just do good by your clients. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody. This is going to be on our Facebook as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead. Make sure that you go ahead and join me and re uh, you know, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We only have a few uh, subscribers. That way you get notified of all the upcoming or the newly uploaded videos, I should say. All right. If no one has anything, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. And I look forward to speaking to you and I hope you learned something today. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.